Hello and welcome back to Let's Code an Indie Game. This is our first sidebar episode. In these episodes I'm going to talk about interesting concepts around the game, but we're not actually going to do any development on the game. So if you just want to code or get on and do the graphics, then you can always move on to the next episode, assuming I've recorded it. Um, but if you'd like to know a bit more about things like game design or how code is written or some of the more interesting topics just sort of in the wider uh, software or game development ecosystem, then carry on watching by all means. So in this episode we are going to talk a tiny bit about the approach that we are taking to game design. Um, and I've got a few diagrams to talk through which will help explain things. So you can probably tell by now we don't have a big master plan that we're following. Instead we're taking the approach of building something, testing it, playing it, then having a think about it, and then doing a bit more building. And this is an approach I like in general for software development, of course it depends what you're building and what you're planning to do, and also who you are. I mean, if you want to use a different approach to planning or development, then you should do that. This isn't a series about telling people what they should do, it's just sharing some techniques and giving people a start. Anyway, what um, yeah, what we're doing is we're building things, testing, playing them, and then having a think about it, and then continuing to develop. And what that means is we don't have a big design phase at the start of a project. Instead, we try and spread our design um, evenly throughout our project along with our building and our graphics and all of the other things that we're going to need to do eventually to get a game delivered. But we do need to do some thinking um, just you know to give ourselves a starting point. So now we have a few um, basic features added to our game. We've, we're kind of starting to get somewhere. We've set up a lot of the wiring. Uh, what are we going to build out of those features? Well, I find a good way of getting, getting my brain around a problem is to write a quick elevator pitch. So that's what I've done. So an elevator pitch is a technique um, I've seen used in a couple of software development projects, a couple of other sort of startup-y things as well, and really the idea is if you only had 30 seconds to sell your project or sell your game to someone or really convince your friend to play your game, how would you do it? And um, I'm using a template where you just answer four questions. Question one, what is it that you're making? What is your game? Question two, what makes your game cool? Why should people spend their valuable time playing your game? Question three, you know, what other games is it like? What's it like if someone enjoys Whatever, if someone enjoys Morrowind, is your game like Morrowind? And finally, what makes your game different? Is uh, it's kind of is useful telling people what your game is like, but you also need to make your game different enough that it's interesting um, and you know worthwhile playing. If you're not pushing the envelope, if you're not doing something new, then people just aren't going to find it too interesting. So, what about us? What are we doing for our game? Well, what is it? So. What we are going to build is a 2D side scroller with roguelike and has hack. Ooh, sorry. Start again. We're going to build a 2D side scroller uh, with roguelike and hack and slash elements. Uh, what does this mean? It's going to be kind of like Golden Axe. It's going to have some random procedurally generated roguelike elements in there as well. And our player is really just going to be walking left and right with enemies walking onto the screen, walking off of the screen, and we um, obviously we need to fight them, collect treasure, all of that good stuff. Um, what ma so what makes it cool? What's going to make it cool? Well, because it's got roguelike elements, each game that people play or each, um, each run through the game is going to be different, so kind of like your um, Nuclear Thrones, your Binding of Isaacs, each game will have a different layout, a different map, you meet enemies in a different order, you get different treasure. Um, we're also, because we're doing pixel art, we're going to pack it full of sort of retro references and retro feel. Uh, so we want, you know, maybe a nice Legend of Zelda style control system, or, you know, maybe some chiptune soundtracks, all of those things which bring back the warm, fuzzy memories of playing games in front of the TV on a Saturday morning. Um, the other thing I want to think about is in-depth characters. So a lot of roguelike games, um, Sort of because of the nature of roguelikes, they don't focus very much on the backstory of the characters, but that's something I'd really like to do. So let's try and make some really lovable heroes and really evil villains. So what's it going to be like? Well, it's going to be like a mashup of Golden Axe, Binding of Isaac, Spelunky, um, any games in that genre really. So if people like those games, hopefully they will like our game. And what makes it different? Well, we're going to focus on the characters. Um, we're going to try and do some interesting things with the items and the control system, so it's not just 
too much like Binding of Isaac or anything like that. And also we're going to uh, stick with the the pixel 2D pixel art style, some nice pixel graphics as well. So as long as we keep our graphics nice and consistent, it should have a really distinctive poppy art feel. Awesome. So that was slightly longer than 30 seconds, but with practice, I'm sure we could get the sales pitch down. And that's really just an exercise to, um, to frame what we're building, get our brains uh, really thinking thinking about the problem in front of us and starting to answer some questions. Of course, the other way you can design something is the good old draw it on the back of a napkin or a post-it note approach. So I've done that as well. Here we go. Um, here is my top secret game design document. Um, I've just really sketched out one and a half rooms in the game. I thought, you know, there'll be a player, there'll be an enemy. It would be cool if the scenery tried to fall on you. Maybe there were some traps on the floor. Um, maybe thought a tiny bit about um, controls and UI, so we need to show health, we need magic. It would be cool if we could use a Golden Axe style magic system where you spend all of your magic points in one go. Maybe combine it with some roguelike elements as well, so you don't exactly know what spell you're casting. Um, yeah, we've drawn a dungeon kind of background there, because I expect there'll be a dungeon in there somewhere, because it's a roguelike. Uh, we've got maybe the idea of having two buttons, so uh, kind of like... In, uh, in the early Zelda games where you just had A and B, um, and that's kind of it. But again, just by drawing it a couple of times, sketching it out, thinking about it, we're starting to get a better idea of what we're aiming at. And finally, let's move across to the final diagram. Um, here I've just broken down some of the things we need to get to our first playtest. So really using the elevator pitch and um, the, the sketches I did, what do we need to get our game to the point where we could give it to someone and say, hey, play this for 10 minutes and tell us what you think? Because that's the, going back to our first diagram, that's the important thing here, is not just getting us to test our game, but getting other people to test our game as quickly as possible. Because that's the only way we know it's any good, is it by getting it in front of real users. So we're not going to sit on it for two years and then release it. We're going to be really racing to get something playable into people's hands as quickly as possible. And then they'll tell us if it's any good or not. So what features are we going to be looking at? And this also serves, we're on episode um, nine now, almost on episode 10. So this serves as a good way of saying, well, one, thank you for sticking with the series so far. And two, what are we likely to cover in the next episodes? Well, we need some graphics for our rooms, we need a UI, we need to cover some sprite animation, some sprite sheets, all of that stuff. We need some enemies, we need to be able to save our game, reload our game, Ma random map generation is going to be important, having attacks and items which we can use, also very important. Game over, we need a way to lose. Um, magic, that's going to be, you know, if we want to get that rogue-like hack and slash golden axe style uh, thing going on, we need some magic we can cast. Uh, having a win condition, so being able to lose is important, being able to win also very important. Bosses, having some nice memorable bosses in the game, always a good idea. And some kind of shop or treasure system so people have got a reason to um, to play the game other than just defeating the final boss or winning. You know, you want that micro reward system in there as well. Because having all of these small systems interacting with each other, that's really what makes the game interesting. I mean, that's why Isaac is such a, Binding of Isaac is such an awesome game, because you have all of these smaller systems, and they work together to give you that really interesting emergent gameplay uh, that everyone likes. And finally, you know, you don't have to do this. This is just me throwing out some ideas. Um, I'm not saying that big design is bad or design up front is bad. That's just not the style we're going to go with here, partly because... Um, that's just not the way my brain works, but partly because I think for the kind of game we're making, this is maybe a better fit. And also, none of this is set in stone. We can always go back and change things as we learn. So just because we've said that we're going to have bosses in our game, you know, maybe we won't. Maybe we'll test it out. Maybe we'll just get bored and uh, it's not a good idea anymore. But for now, this is where we are. Um, I hope you've enjoyed a non-coding episode, but let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of these or less of these. And, you know, and also, yeah, a big thanks to anyone who's a hit like or subscribe or commented. Um, I've seen, I've had a few more comments lately and that's been awesome as well. I'm really enjoying this and I hope you stick with the series. Thanks very much.